Welcome to Monster Hunter World. There are 14 distinct weapons in Monster Hunter World, and you're probably not going to love them all. This series prides itself in its uniquely different playstyles as dictated by your weapon choice, which means that certain weapons can actually handle like a whole different game. What works perfectly in the mind of one player could be incredibly encumbering for another. In this video I'm going to break down each weapon by what kind of overall damage output you can expect, the weapon's intended range, and overall role for your team. But most importantly, I'm going to give an example of another game or genre that each of these weapons either feels similar to, or its core concepts and tactics can be directly comparable. This should help outside players who are not familiar with Monster Hunter pinpoint the preferred playstyle and then assign it to a corresponding weapon. Sword and Shield the Sword and Shield is a medium mobility, medium defense, medium attack style weapon that is not only a great all-around weapon for newcomers to start with, but also a reliable backup for high-level players. As we take a look at my very rough approximation of what kind of damage the Sword and Shield will provide across the average hunt, we see a very steady and easily maintainable flow of damage from the Sword and Shield. This weapon keeps you up in the fight very consistently and cuts down on lost time with item maintenance like healing. The Sword and Shield has a unique ability to actually use items while your weapon is drawn. This makes this a great pick for anyone who doesn't like the idea of constantly having to sheathe their weapon. The Sword and Shield's playstyle lends itself well to casual players of the Dark Souls series who prefer to have that balanced attack and defense capabilities and don't solely rely on their dodging prowess. This is also a great fit for anyone familiar with the Zelda series and are used to being locked onto a target with shield raised and attacking when the opportunity arises. The Sword and Shield is the go-to all-around weapon of Monster Hunter World. Longsword The Longsword is a medium mobility, high damage, low defense style weapon that benefits from its wide reaching attacks that can tear up the monster but also has a high potential of smacking your teammates if not careful. This makes the Longsword a great weapon for beginners to practice with solo but the skill gap between a novice and an expert with the Longsword will be very apparent when playing online. As we look at the damage chart, we see fairly high damage outputs that increase in power the more you charge up your weapon's spirit gauge, and then spikes of damage when performing this weapon's special attacks that extend the spirit gauge while increasing your weapon's overall damage. This means that longsword users will benefit from consistent attacks early on leading to higher damage output later in the hunt. The longsword's playstyle might appeal to anyone familiar with Musou games like the Dynasty Warrior series. If you like the idea of a multitude of wide sweeping attacks that are building up to a devastating special attack that you will rinse and repeat, the longsword is the weapon for you. Heavy Bowgun the Heavy Bowgun is a low mobility, long range, medium damage weapon that keeps you out of harm's way as long as you don't get charged. The Heavy Bowgun uses multiple ammo types that can be switched out on the fly. This makes this weapon very versatile to a variety of playstyles. You can go all in with damage with artillery, barrages, and status ailments, or play a support role, sit back and shoot your teammates with health and damage boosts. The Heavy Bowgun has pretty consistent medium damage output with decent spikes of damage when your special ammo is charged that can lead into a full auto machine gun style attack or a super high damaging prone sniper shot. The Heavy Bowgun will be right at home with anyone not familiar with normal third person rolly rolly dodge dodge action games but for people who feel more at home with shooters and building up damage to unleash a barrage of bullets from afar. Insect Glaive The Insect Glaive is an aerial combat focused melee weapon that has high mobility, medium damage, and has a unique mechanic where you send out your kinsect to gather buffs for yourself by targeting certain areas of the monster. The Insect Glaive is easy to start with and throw some attacks around, but it also has one of the highest skill ceilings in the game. Trying to keep up your weapon buffs with strategic aim of your kinsect along with your ability to bounce around in the air to deal damage will make mastery of this weapon all that more rewarding. Looking at the Insect Glaive's damage output, we actually see something quite interesting with this weapon. We see fairly high normal damage output, but with this weapon in particular, you have a very important job for the team, and that is mounting the monster. We see here a drop off in damage, and that is when you are actually mounted on the monster and you're dealing little to no damage, but the end goal of this is to attack the monster enough while mounted to topple it. This will lead to you and all your teammates having a huge window to lay down damage. 
The inset glaze playstyle is hard to pin down exactly, but in my opinion it will be right at home with anyone that liked the mounting mechanic in Dragon's Dogma that has you physically interacting with the monster. The inset glaive will keep you closer to the monster than any other weapon, and that's because half the time you'll be riding it. Lance The Lance is a medium damage, high defense weapon with an odd combination of low and high mobility. Normal movement with a lance is incredibly slow, but with strategic use of the lance's charge, it somehow is also one of the highest mobility weapons in the game. For getting around the map, at least. The lance is all about taking on the monster head-on and absorbing as much of the damage as possible while poking at the monster in the face. One of the most beneficial uses of the lance's shield is being able to have the shield raised while still being able to attack. Combine this with an attack-absorbing counter move, and you can take nearly any damage head-on, if your timing is right. The Lance's damage output is actually quite good for being a defensive class, and your pokes will eventually outdamage some of the other classes if you're capable of staying on the monster like glue and keeping up the harassment. You will have some damage drop-offs while shielding yourself and other players from attacks, but this is the price you pay for playing one of the most selfless roles in the game. The Lance is great for anyone that enjoys tanking and RPGs and MMOs, but also for someone capable of reading incoming attacks and timing a successful counter. You can also charge around the map all day, and that's fun too. The Bow The Bow is a high mobility, medium damage, low defense weapon that keeps you surprisingly close to the monster for a ranged weapon. Think of the Bow as more of a melee weapon with range, because the Bow's sweet spot for damage is just barely out of reach of most monsters' swipes. This weapon has you constantly charging up your bow shots in conjunction with dodging to shorten your delay between shots. The Bow provides pretty solid damage, and you will see spikes in damage when using your different types of arrows to deal heavy damage, stun the monster, or inflict various other status effects. Just like the other ranged weapons, however, you will see some damage fall off later on in the hunt if you use up most of your high-powered ammo early on in the hunt. The Bow is perfect for anyone who likes a good medium distance fight, where you're still actively interacting with the monster, dodging attacks, but still able to apply damage and status effects. Anyone that likes a good old shotgun range combat or the old school shooter trick of circle strafing around a foe will enjoy the bow's unique playstyle. Hammer The hammer is a high damage, short reach, movement based weapon. The hammer's unique ability to charge up attacks while running makes it one of the best monster rundown and hit and run style weapons in the game. Your standing still attacks have very poor reach and if not aimed properly, you can easily miss attacks on the monster just a few feet away, but these short range attacks really bolster home the point of using the hammer as a hit and run weapon. The hammer has very maintainable high damage and since you're going to be mostly dealing blunt damage if combined with a monster's face, you're going to be stunning the monster a lot and this yields a large boost in damage for the entire team while the monster is stunned. If you want to maximize the amount of free opportunities to wail on a monster as a team, combine a hammer and an insect glaive in a team for a maximum amount of monster incapacitating. The hammer is perfect for anyone who enjoys short, hit and run tactics that often damage and confuse the opposition. Switch Axe the Switch Axe is a transforming weapon with high damage and medium to low mobility depending on which mode you're in. The Axe mode keeps you decently mobile for the size of the weapon and has some amazing reach. The Axe form is plenty useful by itself, but when you really want to deal maximum damage, you will want to be in the slow moving sword form. This is best used when the monster is downed. Spikes and damage will happen when these opportunities arise, and the Switch Axe has huge potential for damage if used correctly. This element will feel perfect for anyone who greatly enjoyed Bloodborne's trick weapons that could transform mid-combo to extend your reach or damage potential. Dual Blades The Dual Blades are a high mobility, medium damage weapon that can easily be classified as the hack and slash style weapon for the game. The Dual Blades will have you constantly laying down a multitude of low damaging attacks that will allow you to then enter your demon mode that will give you a crazy burst in damage while your stamina constantly drains. You will see huge damage potential if you time these just right and don't waste your opportunities. 
This makes the dual blade super easy to button mash for beginners, but leaves a super high skill ceiling and learning for advanced players. Obviously skilled players will know exactly the combos they are doing, but this weapon is the hardest in the game to tell exactly what outcome your button presses are doing, since the attacks blur into each other more so than any of the wide swinging smash attacks of the other larger weapons. This weapon is for anyone who enjoys the hack and slash genre like God of War or any other games where it's less about exact button presses yielding very telegraphed attacks and more about pressing buttons to see a multitude of crazy spinning attacks come out. Or also for anyone who is burnt out on the current industry trend of slower methodical combat. Hunting Horn the Hunting Horn is a medium damage, medium mobility support weapon that can buff the entire team with the use of songs. These songs are played by performing corresponding attacks that add colored notes to your bar. These can then be played one at a time or stocked up to play a multitude of songs all at once. Although you don't have to connect with your attacks to have them yield notes, you'll be twice as effective if you're attacking the monster adding the correct notes to your bar and supporting your team with a well-timed song. As you can see, the Hunting Horn's damage is actually pretty good for a support weapon, with it falling slightly under the normal hammer's damage output, but you'll see constant damage drop-offs while performing your songs, but oftentimes the buffs they provide the entire team are well worth the pause in action. The Hunting Horn is great for anyone who enjoys a good support or healer role in an MMO team experience. The way you're activating your songs is the closest thing in Monster Hunter to activating a traditional skill in an MMO. If you enjoy being the favorite but most harshly criticized member of your hunting party, consider the Hunting Horn's bard-like playstyle. Light Bowgun the Light Bowgun is a high mobility, medium damage weapon with some tactical elements. The Light Bowgun is all about staying on the move, laying down fire, and setting up traps in the monster's predicted path. The Light Bowgun, just like the Heavy Bowgun, can use a multitude of ammo types that can be used either offensively, defensively, or for supporting the team. As we can see with the Light Bowgun's damage, you're not going to be the hardest hitting member on your team, but you're going to be one of the most consistent. It's very easy to keep up your barrage with the Light Bowgun's far superior movement speed to its heavy counterpart. The Light Bowgun is perfect for ranged players that like to stay on the move and have a knack for tactical planning and monster anticipation. Charge Blade The Charge Blade is a high damage, medium defense, medium mobility style weapon that can be devastating when used properly. Just like the Switch Axe, the Charge Blade has two forms, the Sword and Shield mode and its super large axe mode. This weapon has a more precise flow to how you use it more so than the switch axe. You're going to be charging up the heat of your weapon while landing hits in sword and shield mode, and then funneling that power into your axe mode to deliver a huge amount of damage. This makes the charge blade one of the best all around weapons since it combines the ability to shield most attacks, fast hitting strikes, and huge devastating blows all in one. Unlike the normal sword and shield however, you cannot use items while your weapon is out and you'll have to sheath your weapon for any items to be used. The Charge Blade is great for anyone who enjoys an all-around weapon like the Sword and Shield, but wants slightly more depth and range of possibilities with their weapon. This, however, can be a beginner's trap weapon. If you don't know how to correctly funnel your weapon's heat into your vials, you'll find your attacks constantly bouncing off the monster while your sword is overheated. Gun Lance the Gun Lance is a low mobility, medium damage melee weapon that has some ranged potential. This weapon has a similar playstyle to the Lance, but with more emphasis on attack rather than defense. The Gun Lance provides pretty solid damage, and we will see spikes when unleashing a well aimed blast into the monster's face. Don't think, however, that this is just the Lance weapon but with a gun attached. The Gun Lance loses a lot of the unique defensive and mobility options of the Lance. You are no longer able to do the advanced shielding techniques along with losing the Lance's crazy charge ability. The Gun Lance is for anyone who finds the concept of the Lance interesting but wished it was more gunnery. Great Sword This is the big daddy weapon of the game, with insanely low mobility but insanely high damage potential, if you can connect with your blows. As we can see, the Great Sword has the highest damage potential in the game, but one of the most inconsistent. You will be constantly sheathing and taking out your weapon during a fight just to get within attack range, but when you do, you better time it right because your hits are slow but devastating. 
This is another one of those beginner's trap weapons, and never, never hand someone the great sword who has never played Monster Hunter before, because the speed in which you move when your sword is out is often incredibly off-putting to new players by its awkwardly slow movement speed. The great sword benefits the most from knowledge, knowledge of the game and monster. This weapon is incredible in the hands of a skilled user, and something for many to strive for in their Monster Hunter mastery. This weapon is best for anyone who loves slow, methodical combat games and enjoys learning monsters' attacks and patterns in order to perfectly exploit your openings for damage. That concludes all 14 weapon types in Monster Hunter World. Hopefully this has helped some newcomers to the series pin down the right weapon to suit the preferred playstyle. If new players to Monster Hunter try just a few of the wrong weapons that don't fit their preferences, it could turn away a potential lifelong fan before they even get to the point where they realize what the Monster Hunter magic is all about. I think my philosophy of the Soul series reigns true here with Monster Hunter. Every gamer loves Monster Hunter. You either give up before you realize it, or you make it to that point to where it clicks and then you're on board for life. This has been Deadeye and Hunt On.